Yeah. Day three. Awesome. Yay, yeah. day three. What I'd like to do today is try and get everybody to a point where we feel like we've hit a little milestone by the end of the day. We finally got camera in today. Yep. Yay, yep. milestone. So that's a big one. Derek is very close on the concept for the girl. So I think by the end of today, we could have something that's starting to look a little bit like us. That would be my ideal situation if we can get a little bit of play control in there as well and a, a character that looks like us and we've already got an environment that looks like us and it's going to start to feel like our game. Yeah, I made good progress yesterday. I uh, started some sketches on um, music design, so that's we're uh, well on our way. Because AF projects require original score, it's been a great opportunity for um, in-house audio guys to just take a stab. It's really challenging because uh, with music, so many people have so many different tastes of how they want. This moment is like the most scary because we play a lot of clips and there's a lot of concepting and you hear a lot of a lot of things and then and they may have something in their brain that you know if they're not a, comp a musician they just or an audio guy they just don't know what they want to hear and he's so passionate and he's he describes things in such emotional tones he was keen on ambience he really wanted the sounds to sort of stack and layer and he mentioned specific instruments like like delayed piano delayed cello um, you try not to be like a court gesture, like a scribe that copies one idea to the next. So I just kind of did what I would have liked to see and more so than what he wanted me to do. Like he had, obviously you try to stay within the boundaries with, with games. You, you don't want a wall of sound the whole time because it gets so fatiguing. So I pitched him to the idea, we'll have things like that, but we'll sort of like blend things in. I'll make the score and then I'll deconstruct it into parts and then we'll we'll have it layered in different parts of the game so that it feels like it's always kind of coming in and out. Hopefully things will things will work out. I bet when you know Derek probably went through the same thing. Like so I drew this and and he's like, "Oh, that's not what I wanted." <laughs> or whatever, like whatever that uh, that that feeling is, but because our time is so short, um, I just basically told Andy, "Hey, you need to listen to this right away because if I go on this track, there's no stopping it after this point. <laughs> I look for things where you were using traditional instruments but in sort of a, a non-traditional way. I think this might be it. So like, I had stuff like this. So that's actually like a cello. Again, it's relatively generic, but this should be, this is the save cue. Like I, I'm pretty sure that Andy's gonna be like, oh, that's cool. Uh, it's organic, but it, it's organic in, on my terms. Like I wanted to, I have a clear vision of like, I wanted solo instruments to be big rather than a mush. So those are like just cello scrapes. And then the midsection is um, kind of this more tonal. So it, he, we talked about the feeling of um, optimism or uh, a sense of wonder, but it's, it's like fearful, not like a horror film, but fear in terms of like fear of the unknown. So I think this will work really well for the mid. Um, so he'll be all like, "Yeah, that's that's the right right direction." And then and then I play the third cue, which is pretty risky, but uh, we'll see how. So uh, we'll see what you guys think. Um, he's he's supposed to come like any minute, but um, do you want me to go get him? Or so the second part is the kind of the the stab at the the the, the Ebo uh, uh, piano. Um, there are some strings here. I'll work on the mix, but. Um, tones we talked about so I think I think oh look he's smiling yeah so that I think I'll, I'll be able to separate those elements out and I think I think we're gonna be we're gonna be in good shape yeah that's fantastic just giving me shivers <laughs> so, yeah. a lot of that has to do with delay more so than reverb So this thing is my first attempt at sort of the title ish thing I can't play cello but I'm a, I, I, I'm a piano player so it is pretty melodic but I want you to see what what you thought of it
mind you, he smiled instead of the fr terrifying, terrifying moment of the non-committal. <laughs> yeah, the non-committal. God, that's mm. the worst. Uh, cool. Well, I got that on camera. That was kind of frightening. It's great. I think it might be a little melancholy, uh, but mm. I definitely like the tones. Mm. You know what I should do is I should have you play. Just hold a note so that way you can say that you actually played that here. Just, I'll just record you. That one. Yeah. It's brilliant. You are making I'm a. a <laughs> exactly. Six needs to continue to be right next to that rubber. So should I bring up this up here? This clue, uh, number five, you follow via a smell trail from the previous clue, four, and so there really shouldn't be a river cutting off, that off. Okay. Okay. I don't know if, if we really want it like going all the way down that bottom area. It looks okay. awesome, and I can see what you'd want, right. but at least okay. with the current setup. Okay. Um, it feels like it's more about the top half of the map. Okay. Uh, maybe Still it determined. could run along the bottom, the side here in some way. Maybe that could be part of, maybe it's like a deep river there and it could be part of your, your boundary. Okay. I'm not sure. I basically need to be able to walk from here to there without crossing the river. Mm -hmm. And then I need to have to like cross the The thing the about it like this is like, I, I like the idea of having a river you can just walk along and have fun walking along. Sure. Um, and cross a few times, you know, like, uh, because of its snakiness. Um, Could we do an interesting creek on this side, like a little offshoot? Yeah. Because that's a really, that's like the real cool um, explore, hide some interesting yeah. stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, we could have two of them. We can have, just make sure that one... Like it's a fork. This one could potentially, yeah, this one could potentially go past here and even go into a gully or a waterfall over there. Because this is going to be a lower drop down side. And it's all freely navigable. You can go anywhere from the very beginning. So. The things that we put in there trying to tell people where to go are really going to be ushering them in the beginning to find the first clues. There's going to be a bottleneck at the very beginning. Then there's going to be um, something that kind of nudges you into one direction. It's just going to be the smallest little things we put in there that make you walk around them, like the clumps of trees. Like a ridge or something here. Like a really low yeah. one. So you can still walk over it, but it'll kind of guide you towards this one. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. So like here, Go from here to here, 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 and then up here, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I guess the other way would be like here, 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 and then maybe over here, and then over here. Oh, do you want to move something here? Well, it, this potential way, if you do it really right, um, means that you don't get close to this edge, and I feel like this edge will be really cool um, because we can have a good amount of space to do big giant trees. Especially if we do some awesome waterfall there. Yeah. So the tricky thing there is the poop clue. <laughs> so basically the paw print clue would then just go like right there and the poop clue would need to be between these two. Oh, okay, we can so we can move the over. poop? <laughs> I'd, yeah. say, I'd say have it so that it comes this way and then justify this on right side yeah. going out. So um, we end up here. And then I'll just move this one over to yeah. here? Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Did you see the new sprite sheet yet? The new oh, I haven't looked at it in detail. Okay. It's, oh, it's just like a mock-up, but it's pretty close. It's on the forums. Oh, it's on the forums. Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah. 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 Scroll it's over. Yeah, so that's like a mock-up mm -hmm. of actually. And this like, is the hull. Yeah, so this is this yeah. better describes the yeah, hull like, yeah. compared to this yeah. thing, which is what we have. Yeah, and this, this is, is what I was imagining. Yeah, and this is be like alpha out, and then we'll have the mm -hmm. background behind it. Yeah, dude, I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about uh, potentially having the background kind of like either slowly pan or rotate. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. like make, maybe your ship like so your base is like spinning. Or something yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, dude, it looks like a base in space. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. The other thing I was looking. Okay, cool. There's a lot of um, static ambience going on in that game, but they're going to have a lot of fixed points like energy conductors and things like that. So I'm trying to create some broad sounds that will still work with the music and then have some fixed point uh, like energy sounds. So right now I'm just trying out different phases and 
of really wide stuff. Try and get a crystallizer. Oh yeah, that sounds 80s. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like basically going through and trying anything because this team is kind of ridiculous in the way that they create stuff. They're just super, super creative. So my job is basically to keep up and uh, see if I can make a sound that's going to reflect the absolutely awesome visuals going on. I actually talked to Lee about this a long time ago. He wasn't even really thinking about it for AF. Mm -hmm. We were just having lunch. I think the thing that sold me is when he said, you know, you remember those old 80s videos where they have like a windowsill floating in the air and there's like a giant eye and I'm like, I'm there. That just sounds so cool. <laughs> He's got me on a kick on uh, ELL right now. Mm. Uh, like <laughs> I've been going home at night and listening to Xanadu. And, um, <laughs> but he was like, you know, listen to that, listen to Devo. Mm -hmm. Anything with like old synthesizers that are just arpeggiating all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm only using two synthesizers. I, I like figured out that I can't do anything super high end or it just kind of doesn't feel like it anymore. Yeah. So I've been like trying to take the simplest synths I have and then like dumb down their sound back to the 80s. Mm -hmm. And now I like it, that's all I want to use. It's really it's super fun. Autonomous is in D mm -hmm. and it fluctuates between uh, D minor and D major and what I decided is when Lee told me, like there's a grid level where you'll be going around with the robots, um, but then you can go up onto these observation decks and they can't get up there because they can't do stairs. Mm -hmm. So I figured like, well, okay, so everything on the grid, uh, I'm gonna have that like percussive music, like you're on the move, but when you get up to the observation deck, it all becomes ethereal. And my idea is to like, as you go up, it just kind of evolves into this new sound space and like you, you have this kind of surrounding you and you can see, the whole world out below you. Yeah, I'm excited because like uh, past AFs have been really, really rushed and this one just for some reason it just seems to be really at the right pace and I'm having fun like just finding stuff and putting it in and mm -hmm. it's the first game I've ever composed music for entirely. So <laughs> that was neat. It's, it's finding it, it's really easy with Autonomous because I'm like, well, just keep all the composition really simple. Like keep it super 80s. Like basically verse, chorus, verse, and everything's arpeggiated, and it loops a lot. Oh, there you are. Oh, that's very Kubrick. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find like Logan's run sound, you know? <laughs> Anything just bizarre and melty. I have a feeling in this game, like, there's gonna be a lot of energy-based game stuff, but, um, and, like, the robots and everything are held together by electricity and lightning, mm -hmm. but as a sound guy, you know, if you just have lightning sound everywhere, it's just <laughs> white noise. So, like, eventually you'll be walking around, all you hear is <laughs> So, I'm, like, thinking, like, almost crystalline sounds mm -hmm. for uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. Tron did some interesting stuff. Everything was comb filtered and it had like this pulse going on. Um, and that's kind of what I want to do in this game too, but I want to keep the aesthetic that it's a junkyard. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually adding in distortion, like things are broken. Ah, there we go. That's kind of what I want. It's something like it sounds almost blown out. There we go. Let's hear you on Chimey. That could almost be like a communication thing, actually. Lee's already sent me like a, a, a dialogue chart because mm -hmm. he wants all the robots talking, but he said a couple of them are just going to make noise. Especially if we have like those little grabbers, like, it might make them like really, really irritating. <laughs> you just want to be away from them or the, or the alarm guard. 
Um, but yeah, it's basically a, what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Just going through and um, trying to keep up with the geniuses here. <laughs> it's like walking on the floor of NASA. You like, like, great guys, no problem. And then you come back here and you're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> it's fun. Uh, I've been putting, uh, well, making new torsos and legs uh, to go with all of the heads that I've created so far. A lot of them are still stand-in. Lee has yet to do drawovers on them. I wanted to get them all in the game so there was a base, just something that all of the programmers could work with. So they have all of the different heads to put the different behaviors on. And the, the torsos have different arm attachments. I, I can only attach two arms right now, but... <laughs> But I think we've, you know, come up with some interesting stuff. Like, uh, we've got, um, Lee also gave me some RoboCop reference, but uh, so now we've got <laughs> like, just pseudo RoboCop legs, uh, which is, I don't know, it, it ends up just kind of looking humorous. But uh, this whole game is coming together insanely fast. Like, Kristen started doing, like, material passes, so it's not all, like, Tron-esque and... It's just supposed to be a cyber junkyard. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's a data dump. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't tell Lee that. I'm going to tell him that tomorrow. So, <laughs> yeah, right now we're modifying the Lewis script. Put some different heads on this guy. So let's do. Hopefully, I spelled everything right. Good. Yeah. Looks like I did. There's no idle animation on the wheel legs because I couldn't figure out how to make it look good without it looking weird. <laughs> yeah, they move faster than the tank treads. It's sort of, it's sort of like that balance. It's like speed versus stability on all of the legs. The the torsos are a function of like hit points and. Uh, number of arm slots, uh, and then the heads uh, have have that very complex brain system that I'm sure you've talked to other people about. But uh, like the the sniper one has a very long and narrow vision cone, and a lot of it is based off of the senses. Can it hear? How can it see? How much can it see? How how uh, how wide is his field of view? You sort of combine them together and make these things that I don't know most likely will kill you, which I, I think the best part is, is turning it on and then you sit there and look at it and it turns around and just murders you, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna finish up the torsos today and then I'll have all the heads, all the torsos, all the legs in the game. I'm, I'm surprised how, how far along all of these projects have gone. They're uh, really fast, like three days and like playable versions, things are functional, it's awesome. I think also there's groups of people that gel really well together here, and I th think uh, this is one of the times where all of the teams are made up of those groups of people. <laughs> um, and it's been a lot of fun so far. Oh um, man, they're in. section right here. Whoa, yeah. that looks like... So you've got a waterfall, I guess. I don't know. Whoa! <laughs> At least like an indic indication of a waterfall. Yeah. So you get the main tributary of the creek going right here. Uh -huh. And then, like, I guess that one section that goes to the little pond. Yeah. Oh, man, that looks like some New Orleans scary water. Yeah. Right there. And then this section is where all the brambles will be, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. This clustering is, is looking really, really good. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that a sweet <laughs> jump? Pizza, pizza Box Man, that's his first sweet jump. Yeah, can we get a jump in the games? So yeah, can... yeah. No, we don't have jumping in our games anymore. Yeah, I'm liking the clustering, man, and I'm enjoying the uh, these big logs just kind of yeah. clumping some around. mushrooms. And yeah, take some mushrooms and hang out. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> very cool. But one thing is, a lot of the leafy things that we have in now are going to change drastically when we repaint them. Yeah. Um, so you know the frequency of a lot of the the yes, palm, yeah. of the fronds <laughs> right. and the readability of them is going okay. to change a lot. So um, I wouldn't worry about any of that stuff yet. I would just think okay. about kind of clustering and placement. I have everything pretty much laid out for you guys. Cool. So once you're ready to you rock cool. and roll on it and just make everything look super nice. Very good, very good. Cool, I think that we have a job well done today. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So let's go home and sleep for an hour. Sweet sleep for an hour. Come back. <laughs> come back is that what hour. we've been doing for the past three days? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's cool, man. Awesome. It looks beautiful. All right. And that's, uh, that's this is, that's this.
So this is very much like just long shot of a nebula or something in space, like that, that kind of very classical sci-fi thing. So this is the first Double Fine game that I've written music for. One of the cool things about Amnesia Fortnite and, and Double Fine in general is the ability to kind of branch outside of your kind of official role and do other things that you might have uh, a facility for. So it was really exciting to be able to do that on this. And then I'm also um, doing some of the music implementation. So I, yesterday and today, hooked up a kind of basic adaptive music system where you can uh, you can tell it how what like the danger level is and whether the um, player has like upgraded his base or whatever, and then it will adjust the musical layers in correspondence to that. So I've been kind of digging into the code a little bit and forcing my non-programmer self to like <laughs> to uh, wrestle with that stuff to make that work. Uh, the feel I'm going for is kind of classic, uh, sparse, spacey sci-fi stuff. So I don't I don't have any direct reference, although JP has provided me with some reference that I have not <laughs> I've not listened to yet. So I need to uh, I need to get on that because um, my hope is to have a few different tracks in the game that the player can choose between at any given moment. So um, maybe when I start working on the second main track, it'll be more informed by, by JP's reference. I've done two tracks. This is, the, this is the most developed one, and this is the one that actually has the additional like, danger levels and upgrade uh, layers. So this is what it, this is just the base level. And then there's, on top of that, there is a danger layer that can be set arbitrarily by the game at any time. So I'll kind of push that up a bit. So what I was going for there was kind of, I wanted it to sound like klaxons and crazy alarm sounds, but to have an actual musicality to it. So it's in the same key and tempo as the actual track and it has little embellishments in it that you wouldn't actually hear in an alarm system necessarily, but um, I wanted to, to call the player's attention but still be listenable as music. Um, and then there's another layer, which is like the upgrade layer, which uh, is a little more subtle because the player might be listening to it for long periods of time. And so that's this. It's more just an additional, uh, I'm boosting it way higher than it would be in the game, but it's more just to fill it out a bit and over the course of the game, create the sensation that the music is building a bit as the player is building his bass. And so we haven't really figured out what actual state changes in the game are necessarily gonna correspond to these things, but presumably it'll be stuff like when there's a fire or a hull breach or something, that's when the danger music starts coming up and like uh, maybe once the player hits a certain population threshold or area of the base, then it'll start introducing the upgrade layer. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do with that stuff. Uh, yeah, JP has heard this track um, and uh, the he has not heard the like upgraded layer because uh, I didn't even realize he's in the office right now. It's on Saturday right now. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know he was here. Um, so I hadn't showed it to anyone yet. Um, exclusive for <laughs> two player productions. Um, so no, he hasn't heard that part, but he's heard the main, he's heard the main track. Yeah, everyone on the team has heard the main, the main part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're good with it? Gonna yeah, no, pe people seem to like it. Yeah, I'm, well, so yeah. Next thing is to actually listen to the reference material that JP put together and see, see if this sounds anything like it. Um, I'm not actually too concerned mm -hmm. if any additional tracks diverge from this a bit because the whole idea of having multiple tracks is that if the player doesn't like this one, he can just hit a button uh, that's already in the game working. You just hit a button and it'll just cycle to the next one. And so ideally those will actually be relatively different sounding um, just to allow the player to mm -hmm. hopefully land on something that they like. Because with a simulational game, you never know how long play sessions could be. I mean, there are people who might just sit here playing this thing for eight hours straight. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able to at least give them some choice there. 
but you know the the great thing now is that like you know the, the first step was just kind of like getting things up and functional with programmer art, and then the next step was making sure that like our pipeline for getting art into the game was functional. Probably over the weekend, I'm going to spend time white boxing uh, all of the level layouts for the entire game, and that'll put us in a good place to like sit down and review it and make sure that like the flow of the puzzles makes sense. And then the rest of it is really just implementation. So like there are a ton of rooms, so there's like a lot of scripting to do to hook up all of the puzzles, and then uh, that also means that there's a lot of art to make. Uh, but you know, with those things in place, hopefully going into next week, we can actually just start barreling down on like knuckling down and actually doing all the like content production for the game. There's no way to tell right now whether or not we're screwed as far as the production schedule for the prototype. Um, I, I don't think that we are. Like, I think it would be fine if I waited until Monday to like dive in and do all the rest of the content. But the more time we have in the back end to just focus on polish and, and uh, like both sort of like visual polish and like you know hiding more secrets in the game, like the richer an experience it's going to be. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy to spend a weekend investing that time to uh, to make it good. We have a running implementation of the game where the character can actually run around and switch between rooms and uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously nothing is like, you know, uh, it, there is no, no artist's hand has touched the live version of the game yet, and so um, and I can show you it's pretty crappy. All right. So, um, you know, prototype's pretty crappy at this point, <laughs> but it has all of the, like, has all of the bones of being an actual Zelda game. So we've got, you know, um, like, simple rooms set up, and they're connected to each other. Um, you know, you can actually kind of like, you know, we're doing some tests with some larger rooms. All of this stuff comes uh, straight from the tools, so it's easy for artists to come in here and like actually lay out new levels. Um, perfect, right? Like, beautiful. We'll just go ahead and put that in the game. Uh, you know, we just have single poses, but these guys are actually coming out of like full flash animation. So like all of the all of the character stuff is actually coming out of like the animation pipeline that the artists are going to use. So like. It's super ugly and super uninteresting, but um, it has it has the the skeleton of, of what we need to actually do the implementation of the game. There will be cool stuff in this room at some point. I'll be a badass wizard, little fires, and a badass wizard who sets you on your way. He gave me a bunch of props that I can start using immediately, like you know. So we've got some like plants and some you know some some rocks, and then his trees are really nice. And he didn't hide any subversive imagery in there, which I'm a little <laughs> bit disappointed about. Like that's that's Raz's classic style to to have some shapes hidden in there that maybe aren't maybe safe. He's just that good now. Yeah. Maybe it's still in there. Yeah, maybe if I need to look closer. And it's also there's a little bit of that Rorschach thing, right? It's like I'm looking at that thing and I'm like, mm, that may be that may be sexual. <laughs> so. But it's cool. The, uh, it, it's, it's so much fun to have all of these pieces. Like you know, the, it's one of these things where it's like I'm having this realization that like you know, even if this were just like a totally normal Zelda game, like just the fact that it's, you know being made by Double Fine artists makes it really interesting. And that nonsense mechanical hook that I wanted to put in there, like it's probably that's not even gonna matter. It's gonna be fun to run around in this world.